arrive at church, I'm always reminded of how God gave us this location. After we made the decision to relocate in 2003, we considered many sites, but we were always drawn back to this one. After several offers were rejected, our team actually decided at one point to take this site off the list of places being considered. We determined we would only consider it if it was clear that God was giving it to us. And so our prayer at that time became this, Father, give us your place in your time. God clearly and powerfully answered our prayer. We waited on him and in his time, this property was made available to us at a tremendous discount. And when he also gave the zoning approval, it was clear that he had made this place available to us in his time in a way that only he could have, along with a promise, his promise of his future for Discovery Church. Today, as we walk into the facility, touchstones remind us that we are building on the faith of previous generations who dared to follow God's leading in their time. A reminder that our church was the first Protestant church in the region and a memorial of locations past, one near Lake George and our somewhat recent move from the east side of St. Cloud. As a member of the facility development team, when we completed this facility five years ago, we wanted to create a facility that was prudent as far as fiscally, but yet challenged us when it came to, to uh, allowing God to work. And we knew coming in that the space facility for youth was not what it needed to be. And we really would like to address that now. And the Daring Faith uh, campaign that we're a part of right now is for us to give a legacy to our kids, giving them more space. We need more facilities for our children and our youth and now is the time. Five years ago when we moved here um, to this church, we had, it was a smaller youth group, you know, maybe about 10, 12 students, middle school to high school. Uh, currently for this next fall, we have 15 new sixth graders joining the, the junior high youth ministry. So that really is a lot of students. We are now ministering to well over 40 students in the sixth through 12th grade youth ministry program. And it just, to use this room right here now, it's way too small. So we really do want to create a, a space for students to come where they can believe, belong, and become well-grounded followers um, of Jesus Christ. I think that the new addition will be a good thing, especially with the new people coming in, and we'll have more room. I think it will help me grow in my faith by connecting with other believers more, because you'll just, like, we'll all be together. You know, our ultimate goal with student ministry is to develop a passion for Jesus uh, and experience that life change that only comes with a personal relationship with Him. This is done with biblically centered teaching uh, from a large group stage. Uh, this can also be done in small groups where you're gathering, you're praying, you're processing. You know, we would have an opportunity with this addition to uh, really be a light to our community and create a lasting legacy that shapes students in this area for years to come. To facilitate the relocation of the church, creating as much shared multi-purpose space as possible was essential. That works for a time, but eventually the need for dedicated and focused ministry space is needed to move forward. That time has come. The time for providing that space is now. The area dedicated to children's ministry has worked really well, but we've continued to grow and expand, and so now we're limited in what we can do. The additional space will help us in Awana because we'll be able to have two Awana circles that are going at the same time, which will keep kids from having to stand in line so long waiting for their turn. The last couple of years we've had to consider limiting Awana because there just isn't enough space. The additional space will also help us in Children's Church, our kids' praise, because we'll be able to get up and do activities, fun things for the kids, because we're not sharing the space with adults who have to come to that room during second hour. We have seen our daughter, who's 15, we've seen her just grow spiritually through the impact of this church has had on, on her life and I would just love to see that go on to other kids. I believe that the new youth center at Discovery will be such a place that my grandchildren will want to go to. Additionally, while one group currently uses our facility for a recovery program, added space means we would be able to accommodate requests that have been made for additional groups and future requests from other community groups. Last winter I got a phone call from a lady who lives over in the neighborhood over here and she called and she was wondering what is going on over there on Wednesdays. She had been watching, the parking lot was full 
and she wanted to know what was going on over here, and so I told her. I told her about BSF, and she said, can I come? And I said, of course, you can come. Uh, we also have women who are coming to BSF here, and they are transitioning from class to becoming church members. Discovery is our host church, and so um, they have made the entire church available to BSF to run class. We do not use the offices, but we use every other part of this building. We even use the storage closet inside there for pre-class prayer. We use everything. While a building doesn't do ministry, the facilities do enable ministry to take place. Many previous generations of believers invested sacrificially to serve Christ in their time. This is a very strategic time for our church and, and the choice really is quite simple, is to either try to put, keep God in a box or allow Him to work, for us to get out of the way and allow Him to work in a, in a prudent way. And I, I think uh, this church has a long history going back to the 1800s of, of sacrificing, of time and giving and money. That is our heritage. We have been blessed. We have a tremendous foundation here to do God's work and to share His message to the world, to this community. And this facility, with all of the uh, challenges and, and temptations that our kids are faced with today, we need to counter that. And we really need this facility today. Daring faith needs to be more than just a nice sounding phrase. It's our shared commitment as we respond to God's call to fulfill His purpose in our time. We've been convicted that our capital campaign needs to be more than about just us this time. Our call to fulfill His great commission is loud and it is clear. We are going to trust God to create a faith legacy that will touch future generations both here and in this community. While the majority of the funds will be used to provide much needed facilities here at church, we're also dedicating a portion of the funds to help community organizations with ministries in this area that touch the lives of people in significant ways. We're also committing to increasing the number of unreached people groups that we adopt. These are people who have never heard the name of Jesus. These are ways in which God will use us to change the lives of people for eternity. I'm inviting you to take a bold step of daring faith with me because I'm not ready to retreat into the safety of the status quo, and I know you're not either. Will you trust God to use you to create a faith legacy that will outlast you? This is your moment. This is your opportunity to make an eternal difference and to build something that will outlast your life. Be part of a miracle. You can be sure about this. It will be the best investment you will ever make.